All right. Looks like we have some attendees already, Terry. Cool. <laughs> We're going to get started in just five minutes. Can you hear us okay? Oh, for the growing ups out there, you have, um, my name's Terry, by the way. The, the voice you hear in the background, that's Alyssa. Doing all, she does all the hard work. I just talk. Hi, everyone. And you can hear us okay? Yeah. Nope. We have a microphone that is plugged in and apparently the new iPad isn't quite working for sound, but it doesn't matter. The reason I'm doing this little thing on plants is because there's a lot of people out there who are trapped at home or have school kids and um, that are at home. And I thought it'd be really neat to talk about plants. But before I do that, the other reason we're doing it live is because it's just more fun. You can't tape it, it'll be taped eventually, but it's just something something like that. Now, um, we're gonna do this for the next two weeks. Hopefully we'll sort out all the problems. So next week we'll talk about something else and the week after that at the same time. Okay, first of all, let's start off with cats. No, we can't, this isn't about cats, but there's cats in the background. There's a cat there and a cat there, cats all over the place. Don't worry about them. I'm gonna talk about plants, all right? now. Plants, for all you little kids out there and all you big kids, are the single most important organism in the world. And the reason they're the most important organism in the world, because they can catch sunlight in there in a chemical called chlorophyll, and they have a process called photosynthesis, big word, I know, which changes sunlight into energy and into sugar. Well, it changes sunlight energy into sugars. And then it's stored, and then lots of things eat plants so they can stay alive. And lots of things eat those things, like cats eat mice, so they can stay alive. So without plants, there's going to be not much in the world at all, except little slimy bacteria, maybe some fungi and things like that. So plants are very important. And all plants basically have this ability. Well, not all. Some plants don't have any ability to um, catch sunlight, but they parasitize other plants to get the juices and nutrients. Anyway, plants are all over the world and there's all kinds of different types of plants for example my plant here this plant is called an orchid and as you can see it's green and the green is from chlorophyll and it's at taking the energy in and turning it into sugars and so forth but very luckily this orchid bloomed for me last week so i can show off this orchid now a lot of plants uh oh dirt muck anyway a lot of plants have flowers like this one and flowers are used so that they can attract insects and things and make seeds so we can have other plants. Other plants are also green like this one. Oh, I might break this orchids. This is a fern. Also green, chlorophyll makes sugars, but it doesn't produce flowers. I don't know if it has them, but it produces spores. So there's all kinds of different plants that do all kinds of different things. Here's another fern. And if we look up here, here's a vine. And if we look over here, another kind of vine, there's another vine. I guess I like vines. Huh? Anyway, up here we have oh, a cactus. Now this cactus said it's got a snake in it, but this is a rubber snake. So we don't worry too much about that. It does scare some people. This is a cactus that lives in a tree and it's got little spines, but not much. We call these succulents. These are really cool. They produce gigantic flowers in the springtime. And but not yet, it's really heavy as well. And then we've got other plants that look like cacti. This is from South Africa. This is from Madagascar and it's got lots of spines. Notice it's not very green there, but it has little green leaves. In the winter time, the leaves fall off and it just stores the water there and stays alive. Now, people who study plants are called botanists and I'm a botanist. A botanist is someone who either studies the insides of plants, like the chemistry or the outside of plants, or sometimes like me, they study the names of plants and they know what different plants are and where they live and so forth. And if you look over here, botanists have tons and tons of books usually. Wow. Here's one on mushrooms. <laughs> these are plants on, these are books on mosses, which I'm a specialist in. And there's other books on flowering plants and so forth. And up here, botanists also have other interests. 
like, for example, uh, robots. No, that's not it. Anyway, <laughs> we talk about plants. Let's see. Down here, birds, continents, geology, and so forth. So we're not simply um, people who just study plants. We also like music and things. We also like cats, as you can see here. Some of us, some botanists don't like cats. But that's okay. <laughs> and we also have interest in things like stick insects. I showed this, whoops. That's one of my stick insects. I've got dozens of them. This is a pink winged walking stick. I'm afraid there's his wings. Wow. Come on, undo yourself. Anyway, they're really neat. They smell like plants. Whoops. Anyway. Yes. So you look around my house and you see lots of plants and lots of cats. If you look up here, this is a catwalk. That's what I built for the cats, but that's not a plant. But if you look at this, it's made of wood. And where does wood come from? Plants. You look down here, you look at this. That's just a blanket, right? And this, where do they come from? Except synthetic stuff. They're from plants. So plants are very important, not, because, not only because we eat them, but because we make things out of them. All sorts of things. But if you have at home uh, plants in your house, these are called indoor plants, obviously. But these plants are often from the tropics. They can't live outside because it's too cold. The tropics are a place where it's really hot all the time, like South America and other places. And so a lot of these come from there and that's why I have them inside. But outside plants, I also have lots of. Let's head on out. It's slippery. Now, this is where I live in Vancouver. It's a little small deck, actually. It's really a big deck. And if you look around, there's the city, there's the mountains, there's my greenhouse, and you'll see lots of plants. Now, outdoor plants, especially in the wintertime, often drop all their leaves and you can't see them anymore. They go dormant. It's like sleeping, but it's not really sleeping. But some plants don't go dormant. If you look at the trees around the city, that's a kind of plant, by the way, a tree. If you look at the trees, those trees are woody and they also have their leaves on all year long. Those are called uh, coniferous trees or evergreen trees. And if you look around the city, like with this guy here, it looks dead, but it isn't. It just lost its leaves and it's waiting for springtime. And it's got all these buds that will pop out. Look at the little mosses and things on there. Now, what I specialize in are mosses. And mosses are a plant too. And I especially specialize in peat mosses or sphagnum mosses, and they're really cool. They're like little star-shaped things and so forth. And if you look at sphagnum mosses, one of the great characters of the sphagnum moss is they're mostly hollow and they contain tons of water and I can squeeze out the water and it'll get more water and come back to life. Now, my carnivorous plant or my, uh, my peat mosses often grow with carnivorous plants. Now, carnivorous plants are plants like this pitcher plant. These are plants that eat insects. They don't really eat them. They trap insects and then they digest them, which is really kind of cool. So you notice I kind of like them. So I made these bog gardens all over the place. Some of the insect plants though go dormant. These ones aren't dormant. They're stale. They live all winter long. This guy here is a pitcher plant that had these pictures last summer and they're very very tall and very dead anyway this year this spring they'll start growing again so that we have more uh so that we have more pictures and so forth they catch insects inside your traps oh over here down here we have some more these are little pots i make up for people they buy these with little pitcher plants in them and so forth. Now, in the greenhouse, in the greenhouse, which is here, I have all sorts of other tropical type plants because it's warm in here. Right now, it's um, about 23 degrees. Nice, eh? Toasty. Over here, I've got some succulents, so forth. Here's this is called a burrow's tail. That's called a bucket of water. No, don't want you to that. And you've got some carnivorous plants here. And you've got some more succulents up here. Succulents are plants that hold water, like this guy here. 
That's called a Haworthia, beautiful, eh? It's a window plant. You can see through the windows, see the light. But this is the kid's favorite. This is one of the kid's favorite, favorite plants. This is called a Lithops. That's a scientific name, but it's also called bum plants. Can you tell bum why? Plants. Or living stones, some people call them. But I like calling them bum plants because they look like wee bums sticking up in the air. And I've got lots of them. Here's some more here. Cool, eh? These are starting to grow. They're not, <laughs> they're uh, strained. And over here, I have more carnivorous plants. These are called sundews and so forth. Now, next week, I want to show you all about carnivorous plants, a week from today, especially if you get all the, the bugs worked out of the system. By the way, if there's anybody out there who's good at this kind of stuff, let me know. You can, you can email me. Uh, we have an email thing there. And uh, we're going to get this sorted out. Anywho, here's a Venus flytrap that's just growing, but I'll show you more of that next week. Kind of cool. What else do we have in here that might be worth showing them? Oh, all sorts of different things. There's cac. Oh yeah, cactus. Look at this guy. Ouch. I don't have many cacti in my greenhouse because I move too fast and I get prickled by cacti. Ouch. Now, oh, Alice, get out of here. This is Alice. <laughs> now, Alice is not a plant. Alice is a savanna cat. And what she does is she, aren't you going to do your thing? She likes to clean people. She likes to. <laughs> oh, oh, there she goes. <laughs> she will clean people and other cats until, anyway, she's quite sweet, but she's also very, very smart and is often gets in trouble, like gets in the greenhouse when she doesn't supposed to be in here. Okay, now. Exactly like a cactus. Okay. Where did I get some of these plants? Like these guys here. I collected those in Northern Ontario. Because what I do as a botanist is people fly me around or I drive around and I go to places to collect plants or to identify plants. And that's called field work. Now field work is really cool. It's not like homework. Homework is when I come home and I have to identify the plants and write reports. But field work is fun. So when I'm in the field, like for example, these are onions. These onions I collected Mm -hmm. in the sagebrush area in uh, British Columbia, and they're dormant, but you can still eat them. <laughs> Quite tasty. They're even nicer in the springtime. And over here we have a floating plant that's called duckweed. And it's kind of dormant, but it's still alive. And it's called duckweed because it turns into ducks. No, it, it's eaten by ducks. That's really what it's all about. Here we have a brush. Not sure what else I could show you right now. A lot of <laughs> things are dormant, so it's not really spectacular. In the summertime, everything looks really cool. Anyway, field work. What I'd like you to do, any kids out there and adults too, is I'd like you to, instead of doing homework, do some field work. Become a junior botanist, a junior plant person. And in between now and next week, and hopefully get it set up so that we can do uh, questions and answers and all these other things. So for next week, what I'd like you to do is to go into your neighborhood, either if you live out in the country, it's easy, or in the city, go into the alleyways and go in your front yard, sneak into your neighbors. No, don't do that. Just ask your neighbors, you can go in. And I want you to look at plants, find plants, all sorts of plants. You'd be able to see trees. Now, if you're in Ontario, like we're, hi Nina, by the way, if you're in Ontario, there's a lot of snow. So what are you going to do there? Well, go on out and look for plants. You're going to see trees. You're going to see shrubs. But what about growing on those trees? Can you find any mosses? Can you see tree plants coming up through? Can you see your mother's plants coming up in the garden? So I want you to go out and I want you to just think about this. You don't have to write anything up. You don't have to send anything in. No homework. Just go out and see what you can see.